like to answer that question, who is my pastor? Well, he will be my pastor. Hindi <laughs> ako nagtataka kung bakit ganun mo yung introduction ni Brother Joey sa akin. Kasi, member po niya ako sa Dalupan. Uh, siya po ang uh, chairman mo namin sa Church Council sa Dagupan City Church natin. And our church in Dagupan is uh, under the supervision of the National Office uh, through the Church Council. And uh, Brother Johnny is the chairman. Uh, by the way, sino po yung mga members ng Group 23? Group 23 ba yung nanato kanina? Oh, group 23. Pakita ko yung kamay. Oh, uh, I will not yet congratulate you because we are placing the decision under protest. <laughs> Dapat po kami yung nanalo. Kasi yung pagtayo ko namin ng power biblical. We built it on the rock. Kaya hindi ko namin madala dito sa harap. <laughs> Tapos, kami po yung pinakamahaba. Kasi hindi ko nyo makita ko yung, uh, pinaka, yung tip. Because we have the tip beyond the commerce of man. Kasi nandun ako sa ceiling. So, uh, nabibiro lang ako. Sabi ni Brother Johnny kanina, uh, what we are going to do today is to review the Foursquare policies. Last night, during our uh, evening session, Dr. Brown discussed to us yung pong promise. Anong gagawin sa promise? Believe. Then another na discuss po niya, command. Anong gagawin sa command? Obey. Ngayon, ang didiskasin mo natin, policies. Ano ang gagawin sa policies? Follow. So, yun po ang gagawin mo natin sa policies. Kaya ako, tayo mag-review ngayon. Sapagkat sa ating pong Panginoong Diyos, sa gawain mo ng Lord, hindi mo pwede yung pwede na. So, kailangan ko, we should stick to the policies na ating pong sinusunod sa ating pong organization. So, start na ako sapagkat so uh, ang original time slot ko ho ay 2 hours and 15 minutes. Then, nung nakita ko yung program naging until 12 noon, but I pray to God uh, kasi may problema ko ako na uh, i-reveal ko sa inyo mamaya but I would like to praise the Lord sapagkat answered prayer mo ako sapagkat binawasan mo ng Lord yung kung time slot ko I am starting at 10 10 15 so nabawasan mo yung time slot ko to me I praise the Lord <laughs> alam mo ninyo ang problema ko dunong sa original time slot ko how to keep you awake until 12 noon. Uh, nung pong hindi pa ako sinasagot ng Lord yung pong problem kong yun, I thought of ways how to keep you awake, alive, and kicking until lunch time. Alam mo ninyo, isang way na in-impress mo ng Lord sa akin, I will not be giving out handouts sapagkat if you have your handouts with you, Alam ko kung ang gagawin ninyo, hindi ko kayo makikinig, sasabihin nyo, I will just read this handout when I go home. So, that's one. Another, I will be conducting recitations from time to time. Bakit? Sapagkat naintindihan ko ho yung kung, uh, situation mo ninyo, malamang antukin ko kayo. Kapag ka tinawag ko po yung pangalan ninyo, ibig sabihin, you have now a tantalizing eyes. Third, if the Lord will permit me, I will be giving you a short quiz at the end of the session. 
and the result of which will be announced during our fun night. <laughs> so, sana ho, makinig ho tayo. So, let's start. The first policy that we are going to discuss or review is the policy on marriage and divorce. Dito ko naman basahin sa kami. Policy on marriage and divorce. Ang sabi mo dito, among Christian people, there are those who in their former lives of sin and before they were converted, become entangled in their marriage relations and do not see how these matters can be adjusted. In such cases, it is recommended that the matter will be left in the hands of the Lord and that the persons walk in the light according to the word of God. If you notice, may mga mga underlines dito in their former lives of sin before they were converted. In other words, the Foursquare organization is not closing the door to divorce people before they get converted. So, you know, atansin natin. Letter, uh, next paragraph. High standards of marriage are, it, are very essential to the individual, to the family, and to the cause of Christ. In order to maintain high standards in our organization, divorce is discouraged and is approved for any cause except fornication. It is recommended that all divorced Christians remain single and pray to God so be kept in purity and peace. Ang sabi mo doon sa underlined uh, sentence, divorce is discouraged. And it is not only discouraged, it is also disapproved in our organization. Marami o, uh, ang tao ngayon na maka-technical, they are too legalistic. Attorney, eh, dinidiscourage lang naman. In other words, we are, giving the, we are given the option, pero may karutungo yan. It is disapproved. For any cause, except fornication. And fornication is defined as a consensual sexual intercourse between two persons, not only between a man and a woman, but between two persons who are not married to each other. That is fornication. Maalala ko ko meron akong kwento kung ko ko dyan. Gusto ko yung kwento? Okay. Anyway, wala nang susunod ni Islat sa akin before lunch, di ba? So, we can cover the uh, time allotted for lunch. <laughs> oh, I have no payment. Ang objection niyo, Honor. Meron nung isang mag-asawa. Uh, the husband and the wife, meron nung silang problema sa kanilang anak na uh, high schooler. Yung kanilang anak, masyadong sabi na natin sinungaling. Kasi sabi niya one time, Mami, may babayaran ako na project. Panhingi ng 500 pesos. Ano yung project mo, anak? Mami, kailangan kong bumili ng predicate. <laughs> Tapos the following day, Mami, I need another 200. Bakit, anak? Kasi ang teacher ko nagpapadala ng adjective. <laughs> So, nag-isip po yung mag-asawa kasi hindi ko nila mahuli-huli yung talagang very uh, magaling magsinungaling yung kanilang anak. Bumili mo ng robot, yung uh, lie detecting robot, yung kong husband. So, pagdating niya, uh, parang ganito lang. So, umupo ko sila doon mo sa receiving area nila at nagulo sa sila. Sabi ng wife, Han, ano yung tabi mo sa robot? Ang tanda-tanda mo na para yung gawin yan. So sabi ng husband, Han, ito ay lie detecting robot. Magdetect nito kung nagsisinungaling yung anak natin o hindi. Oo, oh, talaga? Sabi ng wife. Paano? Sabi ng wife. Sabi ng husband, pagka nagsinungaling, one, isang sinungaling, isang kasinungalingan, sasampalin ng robot yung nagsisinungaling. Okay. Pagdating, pagdating ng anak, sabi niya, Mami, attend ako ng one, attend ako ng birthday ng kaibigan ko. 
I need 1,000. Eh, sa totoo lang, walang birthday. Alam mo ninyo yung logot, pinarap po niyo yung bata, sinumpan. Sabi nung nanay, my mother and wife, Han, nakawa naman yung anak mo. Yung robot, hinarap yung wife, sinampal. Bakit? Hindi pala niya anak, hindi pala anak yung husband. Kaya ito sa mga pinagunin niyo, para mag-bumay ang po sa inyo. Spouses po dito, referring to the spouse in the first marriage, yung pong di-divorce. Kung bakit po ganito ito, sapagkat hindi mo natin pinapayagan yung pong mga four-square ministers to solemnize the remarriage of divorced people. Divorce yung klaro ko yun. Except pagka patay na po yung pong first spouse, yung pong spouse in the first marriage. Bakit? Sa pagkat kapag patay na po yung pong first spouse, ang magiging civil status ng pong present spouse, yung pong alive spouse, ay widow or widower. So, we can solemnize the marriage of that divorced people not because he obtained the degree of divorce, but because of his civil status as a widow. So, yun po yun. So, walang conflict doon ha. Uh, baka isipin mo natin, anong difference nung kung namatay o hindi, yung kung na-divorce, malaki ho. That has something to do with the civil status of the uh, yung na-divorce spouse. Pwede balik tayo sa taas. Okay ba ba? Ito, marriage of exceptional character. Ito. Meron nyo akong na-encounter na tanong. Brother Celis, ang tinutukoy lang sa bylaws natin. Uh, this is taken from the bylaws. Divorce. Eh, wala naman tayong divorce dito. Oo, oh, totoo. Wala naman tayong divorce dito. What we have here is annulment of marriage or declaration of nullity of marriage. Pero okay. sabi ko dito, there being no divorce in the Philippines, but in recognition of the same sin as a marriage following divorce existing in a different form. Kaya po po in-underline ng pong divorce existing in a different form sapagkat dito sa Pilipinas walang divorce but we have the so-called nullity of marriage or annulment of marriage. Those two are considered as divorce in another form. So malino po yun. So baka mamaya, eh pastor, Hindi naman ako nag-divorce eh. Nagpaano na lang ako. Pareho pa rin. Pareho po yun. Unusual marriages and marriages of exceptional character shall or may be performed only after counseling sessions with the couple in bearing to bring them where needed to a place of repentance, reconciliation to God, their families, and the church. Ito pong unusual marriages of marriages of exceptional character, ito po yung mga common law relationship between 
Ito po yung mga uh, ilog couples. So, tignan mo natin. Common law marriage. A marriage without the benefit of clergy or civil ceremony known as common law marriage. Ito po yung living. Walang kasal. Uh, either civil o kaya church ceremony. So, reconsidered binding before God provided the union is otherwise is ritual and may be legalized. Yung pong scriptural ko doon, eh, alam na po natin yun. Uh, you are more competent to know that than myself. Pero doon po sa may be legalized, alam mo ninyo, there are instances na may mga living couples. Both of them are single. At first glance, sasabihin mo natin, they are qualified to marry each other. Pero kung titingnan ho natin, sasaliksikin ho natin yung kung family background nila, baka madiscover ho natin that they cannot marry each other. Take note. Hindi pwedeng ikasal ang magkapatid, magpinsan, hindi ka pwedeng magpakasal sa stepdaughter mo, hindi ka pwedeng magpakasal sa adopted daughter mo, hindi ka pwedeng magpakasal sa stepmother mo. So, yun po. Uh, and may be legalized. Kaya in-underline ko po yun because there are common law relationships which cannot be legalized. B.1 uh, B. Such a couples should be counseled to legalize their union by taking advantage of Article 34 or other provisions of the Family Code of the Philippines. Doon po sa Article 34, ito po yung instance na hindi mo kailangan ng marriage license. General rule, tayo mga pastors, before we solemnize the marriage of couples, they should present to us in marriage license. Tamang ba ako? Okay. But there are instances na huwag na po natin hanapin yung po marriage license. One, kapag ka yung babae at lalaki ay nagsasama na bilang mag-asawa for at least five continuous years. That's one qualification. Another qualification, there must be no legal impediment for them to marry each other. So, yun po. It's not enough that they have been living together as husband and wife for more than five years, but it is also necessary for us pastors to determine if there is any legal impediment for them to marry each other. So, important po yun. Without a legal marriage, such a couple should not, shall not be eligible for church membership. So, ito po yun. So, the last one. Upon the legalization of a marriage before the civil authorities, such a couple shall or may be received into forced or membership provided they otherwise qualify. So, one qualification mo nila, they must be legally married. Be the one. Uh, In cases where the couple cannot marry due to legal impediment, and do not choose to separate. It is recommended that such couple remain in the church without formal membership and to raise their children within the church. So, kapag ka may live in couples po kayo ng members of sa church, ang first advice that you should make to them is to legalize their union if it is possible. If it is possible, pag ko nang ipili kung hindi pwede. Then, the second, if it is not possible, the second is that you advise them to separate. And if they need your advice, then you accept them as official members of the church. Eh kung sabihin nila, as ko, mahal na mahal na mo ng isang isa, hindi ba kailangan itong kasal? Huwag mo rin yung patalsikin sila sa church. Let them attend the church, but they are not qualified to be official members of the church. So, malino po yun.
Until then, no sense I union may be dedicated in the years of prison time. So, I would like to remind you, mga kapatid, na ang nagkasala mo doon ay yung buong kongsi. So, sila lang ho ang hindi pwede i-admit as official members. Pero yung pong mga anak hindi ho apektado. Sabi ko dito, they may be dedicated in the usual procedure. Then, next. Should a member elope or enter into a common law marriage, he, she should be counseled to legalize his or union or to separate in case the same union cannot be legalized. So, tapos na po yan. Next. It is recommended that all first law ministers shall refuse to officiate the marriage ceremony of a common law couple for either of the contrasting parties has a living companion by a previous common law union. So, yung pong rule ho natin sa divorce, annulment of marriage, at sa declaration of nullity of marriage na diniscuss ho natin kanina, kung buhay o patay, yung kung first spouse is also applicable dun ho sa common law marriage o union. Unusual marriages and marriages of exceptional character shall or may be performed only after counseling sessions with the couple in endeavoring to bring them where needed to a place of repentance, reconciliation to God, their families, and the church. Next, marriage of doubtful nature. To avoid involvement in a scriptural or illegal marriage, it is recommended that all professional ministers refuse to solemnize marriage whose scriptural or legal nature is doubtful. So dito ho, sa marriage of doubtful nature, it is absolute na hindi mo natin sila, uh, hindi mo natin isosolemnize yung kanilang marriage. I will give you one example of a marriage of doubtful nature. I don't know if uh, we pastors may na-encounter na ako natin yung kung may lumapit sa atin na gusto magpakasal na naka-obtain ng divorce o kaya napanalify po niya yung kanyang marriage abroad. Meron na. Meron. It is very important na yung kung marriage abroad is not automatically binding in the Philippines. So, pagka divorce, okay. Uh, Brad, sorry, we do not recognize divorce. We have no divorce here in the Philippines. E pagka sinabi niya, kung ito ang annulment, o kaya nalitin yung marriage, di ba meron din kayo dito? Yes, meron kayo dito. But, it does not automatically bind with Philippines. Ang requirement po doon, if a person was able to obtain a decree of nullity, annulment, or divorce abroad, para pwede mo siyang ikasal sa Pilipinas, he must have that court decision judicially recognized here in the Philippines. Ano ho ang ina-require mo natin sa kanila? Ask them to go to court and file a petition of judicial recognition of foreign judgment. So, yun po yun. It's not enough, napakitahan ko kayo. Uh, so, meron akong kwan, uh, decree of annulment coming from a California court. Huwag oh. po natin pansinin yung California, kahit na New York pa yan. That is not binding in the Philippines. For that decision, foreign judgment to become binding in the Philippines, there must be a judicial decree here in the Philippines recognizing that foreign judgment. So, malino po yun. <coughs> Solemnization of marriage, authority to solemnize marriage. A pastor who is applying for authority to solemnize marriage may be endorsed by the president upon the recommendation of the district supervisor provided that the pastor no, is currently a duly ordained forceful minister. That's why who has undergone reorientation seminar in the Foursquare on Foursquare bylaws and policies pertaining to solemnization of marriage to be conducted by the district 
supervisor. So if we follow this one, hindi po enough yung pong seminar conducted by the NSO. Sana. Kasi ang sabi ko dito, the seminar should be conducted by the district supervisor. What matter, what aspect on the matter of four square bylaws and policies pertaining to solemnization of marriage. Kasi po, yung pong seminar na kinakandak sa NSO, hindi ho nila dinidiscuss po yung pong bylaws ho ng four square. So aside from knowing the civil code provision on marriage, we should also know our own bylaws and policies pertaining to solemnization of marriage. So that's the rationale behind that. Then, surrender, revocation, expectation of authority to solemnize marriage. The authority to solemnize marriage shall or may be requested to be surrendered, cancelled or revoked or allowed to expire without renewal in the event that there is evidence to whether or not investigated by civil authorities that the minister has been guilty of any of the following. One, solemnization in violation of or in failure to comply with the legal requirements, force or violence and policies. Two, solemnization for financial gain. Three, seceding from the force or organization. Four, failure to maintain a good standing status as a force or minister. I would like to remind you that uh, in the family code, it is necessary for a pastor to solemnize the marriage of a couple that either or both of the contracting parties must be a member of the denomination of his solemnizing officer. So, Either both or uh, either. either both or either. So at least one. Ah, uh, very good. Does it mean that you have to pay? Did you pay the double member? Two double members. First pair. Did you pay the kikasal the pastor dal pedayo ng dabaw? Hindi ko. Hindi ko yung dalan ng denomination. Ang tinuto ko yung odon ay yung pung denomination. <coughs> yung pong denomination as a whole not the local church so as long as one is a four square kahit four square pa yan sa apari o kaya sa ulo pwede mo natin po sa mga yung pong marriage niya then expenditures for wedding fees uh, special emphasis should be made on spiritual preparation and fellowship during weddings and other special occasions to make such occasions really meaningful. Extravagant entertainment, special beyond one beyond one one's means is to be discouraged and considered to be in violation of the principles of Christian stewardship. It all follows. Ito po yung kanan. As a general policy, it is recommended that after due counseling, the minister refers the couple to the civil authorities for solemnization of their marriage. Take note, sabi dito, the minister, for square minister, refers the couple to the civil authorities for solemnization of their marriage. Should the minister believe that the cause of Christ is better served by his performing such a marriage, it is recommended that it be performed only upon evidence of true repentance and in a simple ceremony as in the pastor's office and in all cases without the usual white wedding gown, processions, and attendance. So, sa mga tanan, preferably, elikar po natin sila sa outside force pair. Preferably. Pero, if you see na you can better serve the cause of Christ if you solemnize the marriage to them. Eh, kumbaga, that is a one. That is a matter of uh, the Lord's conviction in you. Primarily, pregnancy. 
A formal wedding to cover premarital sin is deception and mockery. In case the condition is known by the solemnizing minister, it is recommended that the ceremony be simple, as in the pastor's office and without the usual white wedding gown, processions, and attendance. If the premarital pregnancy is not known to the solemnizing officer at the time of the wedding and came to be known to him later, it is the duty of the minister to counsel the couple to facilitate the restoration to right relations with God, their families, and the church. Not all cases of premarital pregnancies can or should be corrected by marriage. Be careful what I did there may be legal impediments. Some couples may be too young to enter into a successful marriage. A marriage under duress may result in a lifetime misery. In all cases, the welfare and support of the child should be given first concern, but the welfare of the couple should not be overlooked. The minister needs God-given God wisdom to counsel the couple wisely. Reason for first of ministers to decline the solemnization of marriage. To all reasons. A minister shall decline to officiate a marriage in cases as follows. One, where well, there is a difference of religion. Pero take note, the law is underlined and done. Difference of religion which may result in the compromise of one's faith. Two conditions there. Difference in religion and that difference in religion may result in a compromise of one's faith. Second, where there is a great difference in education, social standing, or age, which may make it difficult for the couple to be compatible in marriage. Again, two conditions must be met there. First, there must be great difference in education, social standing, or age. Second, that may make it difficult for the couple to be compatible in marriage. So those two conditions 